It's sitting there waiting for a tag to be shown to it. So we take the mold, which is just simply attached by Velcro. This is the exact same procedure the operator would do to mold the part. We put the tag on the reader, on the antenna area, and you'll notice this green light, which is just the active light showing it's ready. If I hit start, actually, I'm sorry, I need to check it. I have to hit teach on this screen. And you can see it turns red, then green. Now, it's read that tag and the current tag reading is 507EE5C4. No other tag has that, that same number. All I do is hit the teach. Now that tag has been associated to that mold. When the PRG antenna sees that tag, it's going to go into its memory and select the sink basin recipe. So when I hit start with that tag on the reader, that's exactly what's going to happen. At this point, all I do is hit return, and that is held in memory. That's just how easy it is to associate or teach a tag to know which mold it's to go to. You know, one say, well, how do I program the tags? The tag you don't program. It's the machine already has very simply been added to a recipe. A selected recipe has been created. Very simple to punch in the values. And then we've got a tag that has its own number. We don't read to that tag or, or write to that tag. We simply read the number off, just like your credit card getting swiped. Okay, at this point, uh, give us a minute here. We'll be right back. What we're going to do is show an automatic injection. So stand by for that. Okay, now we're going to do an automatic injection. So what we'll do is, let's, let's ask uh, Don here in a moment to help us, but I'll point out again what we have for our connections. We have the yellow line, 10 millimeter, 3 8 line. That represents our full vacuum, the black area around the mold, the clamping flange. That's what's helping clamp the mold surfaces together and hold them there. So we have this at full vacuum. In this case, if you see on the gauge, you're at about 23 inches of vacuum. That's adequate, but we would prefer it to be even higher. We'd get 29 or greater, that would be better. But 23 is adequate, and that's a fair amount of vacuum. But less than that, you start to become marginal. The next line is the blue line, which is, re remember, is a regulated line. This we've got set at a half a bar of vacuum, about 15 inches. And that's the controlled vacuum level that's in the cavity. And that's the level the machine's going to look for. It's saying, well, if I'm below 0.4 or I'm greater than 0.6, I'll tell you and I won't begin the injection. So we've got this set at 0.5 or a half a bar of negative vacuum level, negative, negative atmospheric pressure. So the outside atmosphere is a half a bar greater than the atmosphere inside that mold cavity. Then our catch pot will look to witness resin coming through the vent. This is the end point of the fill. This is the final place. We're chasing all the resin that's coming in around the perimeter of the cavity and all converging so that we can witness it come here. Now I've got that recipe set at a few grams greater than we need to fill the mold so we'll see it flow and we will get a little more into the catch pot. This recipe could be refined with, with uh, a bit of uh, multiple trials and keep pulling a few grams out each time to the point where we had virtually none or just a small amount coming up the hose and uh, very little going into the catch pot. And then the last connections are in this case two. Remember we've got more than we really need, but we've got two injection ports for demonstration purposes. So we're going to tee the mix head in here, and then the resin will flow to both sides, and then circumvent the cavity, converging to this point. So we point out here that we have very simple connections, a regulated line, an unregulated vacuum line, and then the injection line. No other wires, sensors, things plugged into the mold. We make it as simple as possible. This is all that's needed. We do all the controls back at the mix head. So while we are looking for pressure and vacuum sensing, we do that right here with a very precise electronic sensor. But it doesn't need to be one connected to every mold. We, we years ago did it that way, and we've learned one sensor connected here communicates completely all the information we need and keeps it tidy and all the wires on the mix head not connected to the system, simplifying it as much as possible.